December 1903. It was the Christmas I received the greatest gift for which I could have ever asked. It was two weeks before Christmas, and we were so busy at the post office. I was postmistress in Candleford, England. This distinction was a highly novel one indeed. In those days, I was the only woman I knew who was in charge of her own business. I had inherited my skills and the post office itself from my adopted parents, Charles and Mary Lane, who had taught me the ways of the Royal Postal Service since I was a mere child. I am eternally grateful for the chance in life they gave me, and especially for the treasured moments of living upstairs in the post office. The fondest of memories include the Christmas of 1903, of which I am about to relate. around the corner. Yes, yes. Mother and father are so excited to have me home. Look, they sent me a letter. Oh, so I see you had time to deliver your own letter to yourself? Sorry, Miss Lane. It was right on top and I just had to open it before work. Yes, that's all very well and good, Laura. But if we don't prepare all this post and all these Christmas packages for Postman Brown, we'll be working all the way through Christmas. I'm sorry, Miss Lane. I'll get right to it. Oh, I'm just so excited to go home, though. I know it's only an hour's walk away, but it feels so far from the hustle and bustle of Candleford. Yes, you've done quite well for yourself, Laura. Rising up from your humble beginnings to holding down a job as a postal assistant. 
and what wondrous times in which we live when a young lady can do such things. Oh yes, I remember as a little girl wondering what it would be like to live in a town. And here I am, earning my keep and having a little bit to send home to mother and father. Every penny counts to them, you know. Oh, how wonderful it will be to be home for Christmas. Yes, indeed. Now, let's see. Oh, where are you going with those boxes? Telegraph, oh, Mrs. Ellen Lane. Telegraph. Thank you, Postman Brown. I am grateful that I'm not the only one who knows how to operate a telegraph machine. Oh, telegram? Did I hear telegram? Oh, how auspicious! I think you might mean auspicious, Laura. Oh, something like that. Yes, indeed. And it would be nice, Laura, if for once the contents of this telegram were kept to the eyes of the recipient only, without you googling at it first. When have I ever done a thing like that? Googling? Why, that's preposterous. Uh, I think you might mean preposterous. P R O. Oh, never mind. Now, let's see. Oh, Postman Brown, this one is addressed to you. Well, I was about to tell you that, Miss Lane. But the conversation seemed to turn to a different direction. Now, let's see here. To Henry Brown. Stop. Come for Christmas. Stop. We're sending a coach December 20th. Stop. Your ticket has been paid. Stop. Your brother, Thomas Brown. Oh, that is exciting news. We will miss you, though, Postman Brown. But how could you pass up an opportunity like this? Yes, indeed. Oh, Laura. Put on the tea and fetch some cakes and biscuits. It's always nice to have a reason to celebrate. Oh, I have just the thing, ma'am. I've made your favorite fruitcake and it's still warm from the oven. Fruitcake, Laura? Oh, fruitcake is my one weakness. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, Miss Lane. Oh, I do hope that you have another one of those Christmas stamps. I really must have another one. Yes, I'm sure I can find one more. Oh, it was just this morning I was saying to my sister, Annabelle, I said, I said, sister, we simply must stop at the post office for another stamp. We have so many letters this year. You know, you do have the option to buy more than one stamp. But then again, what would you do with all your spare time if you weren't here at the post office catching up on the latest gossip? Gossip? I beg your pardon. Absurd. I do not. Do I? Nonsense. Oh my Lord, thanks for our help. Lord, all. What's happening? It's happening. Look, oh, look. Yes. In the name of King Edward the Seventh, what is going on in here? Oh, now, Rupert, do wipe your feet before entering the post yes. office. And Postman Brown, settle down and tell us what on earth is the matter. Oh. The railroads, it's coming to Candleford. <gasps> Whoa! Oh, it's it's so so wonderful. Wonderful. Oh, this is railroad. terrible. More technology is coming into our lives and changing everything. Pray tell, what is so wrong with that? It's all very suspicious to me. We've done things a certain way here for so long. Why change it now? Well, I mean, what's strange if we start wandering about our streets if we had a train station? Well, I suppose if a stranger did come to Candleford, and we got to know him, mm -hmm. he wouldn't be a stranger anymore, now would he? Oh, oh, my oh, oh, it's just all too much. I mean, have you seen the strange contraption made by the Ford Company? They built a two-seater cart with an engine. It's calling it an automobile. They've gone too far this time. Why, I'd say modern technology is helping us in so many ways. Why, take the horse-drawn plow. Back in my father's day, every field had to get plowed with that old thing. But now, we have the steam-driven plow. Oh, oh my word! Oh, oh, and here's another one! Did you see that the Darlington children rode into town on a bicycle? Oh, oh my so oh, no. What need is there for contraptions with two wheels if one has two perfectly good feet? How lazy can modern people be? Well, I for one applaud modern technology. What I wouldn't give for a steam-driven plow of my own to do all the work for me. What will they think of next? I know, I know. A flying machine. Oh, a flying machine. That's ridiculous. 
Such ideas are an abomination. Where is your sense of adventure, Postman Brown? Why, there is one thing that never changes, and that is that constant change is here to stay. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, don't you all realize how much work there is to do? There's posts to be delivered, evergreens to be trimmed, and a business to run. Well, we shan't keep you any longer. We may be back later this afternoon, though. Yes, I'm sure you will. <laughs> Have fun sorting all this out. <laughs> well, ta-ta, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, Penelope, you've completely forgotten about your stamp. Now, are you sure you wouldn't like a few more? Oh, no, what would the fun in that be? Yeah, thank you. Oh, thank you, thank you. Oh, with your permission, Miss Lane, I will want to get this year Elizabeth help of Laura's younger siblings. They're due in town tomorrow morning, and I once again appreciate their services here in delivering the letters. Oh, yes, they never miss market day. It's my folks' bread and butter. This time of year, they'll be selling holly and berries and evergreen boughs to help oh, put food on the table. Signs. And this year, they can earn a bit more running the farthest packages out of town for us. Yes. They were so responsible last year. God bless the little tykes. Oh, and Laura, write them a note and post it on the bulletin by the front door. That way, tomorrow morning, they can see it. Yes, Miss Lane. Ah, yes, the Clark children. There are so many of them. <laughs> well, I, for one, am right proud of my younger brothers and sisters. They're hard-working little wimple snackers. <laughs> I think <laughs> that you mean whipper snackers, Laura. Oh, yes, something like that. I'll go write them the letter. Great idea. I'll pack up a box of packages we bought the clock to to deliver. And I shall cut the evergreen boughs for the staircase. Oh, splendid. Oh, Laura, you've completely forgotten about the tea. Oh, yes. We simply cannot continue working without tea and cakes. As I've said, they are my one weakness. <laughs> yes, that you have mentioned to us, miss. Oh, sorry, tea and cakes coming right up. Well, if you absolutely insist, we will stay for tea. It's only mannerly. I would stay for tea on eons and eons. Oh, it was last week, wasn't it? Fish bar. Mm. Oh, <laughs> well, in that case, we'll all have to have a cup of... Oh. Don't mind if I do too. Oh, well then lovely. Everyone will be staying for tea and cake. Oh, yes. 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 One yes. love a good tea and cake. Oh, oh, tea. Tea. Here we are. Oh, nice. Tea and cake is served to the royal subjects of his royal postal service. Oh, oh lovely. Thank you so much. Oh, so oh, 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 this is a lot. It's not quite so much. Oh, this is a lot.
We've come all this way and we can't go home without seeing sis. Do you know she's been living at the post office for almost two years now? Should we just drop in on Laura at her steam place of employment? Are you sure that's proper? She don't want to see the likes of us while she's on the job in Candleford. What do you mean? We're family, for goodness sakes. Of course she wants to see us. Not at this time of day, Robert. I'll wager. She's right. What if we're barging in at dinner time? Why, that ain't proper. We ought to just wait till she's back home in Candleford before we go bothering her. Well, I do suppose it's getting a bit late. How about we just head over and throw a rock at her window or something? <gasps> Wait, Her Majesty's Miss Lane's window pane? <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you, Lizzie. Lord knows we ought to upset Miss Lane. Yeah, bad idea, Robert. Sometimes I really do wonder about you. Let's just assess the situation. Maybe she's still up. Robert, knock on the door. Hang on a minute. Look here. In Lord's hand running it all. Look it, it's true! <gasps> Whoa. Oh my goodness! Boris, read this and the note! To the Clark children! Oh my, oh my goodness, read it! Read it! Read it. it. Oh, so oh yeah! Funny. Remember last Christmas? We each made a whole penny! Oh, that was yeah. for this Christmas too! <gasps> Alright then, I'll read it. To the Clark children! That's us! Shh. Let us continue. It being so close to Christmas, Postmistress Lang, along with Postman Brown, would like to gar garner your help. <gasps> garner your help? What on earth does that mean? What's that What's supposed to mean? It means they need our help again this Christmas. <gasps> That's jolly good. Can oh, we get yes. this? Look over there, a box full of delivery. <gasps> what an honor to assist His Majesty's Royal Postal Service. Absolutely. Good old Laura, always looking out for us. Yeah. <laughs> yes, the letter finishes. Of course you'd be handsomely compensated. Please see the box of letters and packages to deliver. Love, Laura. Wow. So exciting. She's made quite a name for herself in this world, our Laura. One day, won't we just like her? Our sister, from a little old village of Lark Rise, working in Candleford, at a post office, no less. Milkmaid to assistant postmistress. I'm so proud so of her. Huh? Times certainly are changing for girls, I'd say. It is true. Who would have thunk it? <laughs> <laughs> well, you lot, we better get to it. Here are tonight's packages, and there's sure to be more tomorrow. From our on pod this oh, Christmas. Oh, yes, it's totally <gasps> good. I know. Let's buy the Christmas goose with us and bring it home with us tonight. <gasps> yes, yeah. 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 So what if we buy a Christmas cake from the bakery? <gasps> yes. yes! Steady on. We'll need to work all week to earn that much. And yeah. besides, do you see a bakery open? No. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah he's yeah. right. I appreciate the enthusiasm, Arnie, Jenny, but we should probably wait and see how much Miss Lane actually pays us, and then we can determine what to buy more for Christmas dinner. Yeah, yeah she's so right. So Come on, so let's get cracking. Redberry, oh. I have to go this way. from Candleford has arrived. Wonderful. That package, Father? Can I open it? What is it? Please, please, Father. What is it? No, Cousin. I'm sure it's for me. Shall I open it, Father? We shall not open this package until Christmas Eve. What? No, you can't possibly do no, this please, to us. Let us open it. Now, now. Not for today. But I will tell you this. It was made by one of the finest artisans in all of Candleford. Really? Oh, this is all too much. Handmade in Candleford? Oh, 
Candleford, that godforsaken town of all the places, dear. Why now, dear? I despise Candleford, all those posh townsfolk. They don't look like us. They don't speak like us. And they don't act like us. Well, what's so wrong with that, Mother? There's a whole world of towns out there to discover, Candleford being just one of them. Why, I heard Candleford is having a parade on Christmas Eve. Why can't we have a parade like that here in Fordlow? Why does the parade have to be in that wretched town? Cassie, we're not the center of the universe, you know. And it's not a wretched town. You can't say all of Candleford is wretched when you just don't know that. But I do know that! Candleford is wretched because Mother says it is! Do you even hear yourself, Cassie? Ugh. You don't even know anyone in Candleford. I will not hear one more word honored about that town one more time in this household. I just don't understand why. Dear, don't you think it's time to let bygones be bygones? It's been so long. <sighs> no, it is not time for that, and it shall never be time for that. Townspeople, especially those townspeople, are self-centered, self-important, and self-absorbed. Mother, those are such unfounded allegations. <sighs> they are not unfounded. I listen to you, Elizabeth, with all your high in words. What's so incorrect about a girl having vocabulary? That's enough, you two. Now, dear. Don't you think it is time to forgive and to let all those feelings that have been knotting you up go? Well... Forgive? Forgive what, Father? What does Mother have against Candleford? Never mind you. That is your mother's business. My dear Abigail, have you forgotten? It's Christmas, the time that we celebrate the one who has forgiven us, even after all we've done. And Joe has done plenty. Oi, <laughs> now you two. Time of good cheer. Time of good cheer. Or I'll clip your ear. <laughs> <laughs>
All right. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I'm so sorry. Let me clean up these evergreen boughs. Please no. excuse the mess. No, no, no. Take all the time you need. The best mess is, after all, Christmas decorations. Yes, miss, you called. Laura Clark, straighten your attire and please assist Miss Penelope with whatever she needs. Oh, no, no. It's quite fine. I was just thinking to myself this morning. I said, I simply must stop back at the post office to see if any packages came in my name. Oh, are you expecting something? Oh, yes, new dresses for my trip to Paris. Oh, I think you'll find it's pronounced Paris. Paris, Laura, Paris. Well, bless my soul. Never have I even dreamed of traveling all the way to Paris. Paris, you say? Yes, I'm spending Christmas in Paris. Did you know, Miss Lane? Did you? Did you? Well, I do now. I'll be with you in right a moment. Laura, please fetch Miss Penelope some tea and help her with whatever she needs. Oh, right. What can I do for you, Miss Penelope? Would you like some tea? Don't mind if I do. Uh, Rupert! Yes, that would be splendid. Okay. Tea? Do I hear someone say tea? <laughs> oh, oh, no. Just in time, then. My word. Selective hearing, I call it. <laughs> Only hearing what one wishes to hear. Yes. Yes. So. Right then, I'll put on the kettle. Oh, so it's dresses, isn't it, Miss? Oh, yes. We're looking for the boxes marked from Rosemond Haberdashery. I simply must have my dresses before I leave for Paris tomorrow. Who is we, Miss Lane? She keeps on saying we. Well, I'm quite sure she means the royal we. Me, myself, and I. Yes, just like it's the royal we that does all the work around here. <laughs> well, in that case, I'm more confused than ever. <laughs> so, Miss Penelope. I hear you're off to Paris? In this weather? Oh, Lord help us indeed. Oh, Paris at Christmas! Mm. What a perfectly dreamy contemplation. Mm. Oh, can't you take me with you? <laughs> oh, please, Laura. 
Inviting oneself to any event, never mind an expensive overseas voyage, is simply unheard of. Please. Sorry, miss. Oh, Miss Penelope, I think I saw some boxes with your name on them. <gasps> oh? The morning papers did say there'd be a week or two rather inclement weather, Miss Penelope. Oh, right. A voyage across the ocean at this time could be quite treacherous. Yes, indeed. Yes, there is quite a north wind at the moment. Oh. Yes. Oh, where are those boxes? I dropped them here earlier. Uh, Laura, you should not have dropped them anywhere. Oh, I'll find them. I'm sorry, miss. I'll find them. Let the professional handle this. Wait a minute. What's this? Miss Lane, look what I found. Call cool, Lummy. How did that get there? By heavens, it's a letter, Miss Lane. What? Uh huh. What a disgrace. An undelivered letter? And look, it got wet. You can't see who it's addressed to. You can just see that it says 12 Mulberry Patch Lane, Fordlow. Perhaps there is a name to the recipient? All the names are obscured. The body of the letter says, I'm writing to tell you that I'm your sister. Oh, your sister. Oh. You and I were both put up for adoption years ago. I've only just discovered this myself. I would love to meet you, and perhaps from there, a friendship can blossom. And the rest is faded. Oh, oh heavens, Lord. it's too much. Oh, whoever wrote this must have been so saddened not to hear back. Imagine having family you never even knew you had. Oh, his postmistress. What can we do? We must do something. Yes. Well, this letter was written 10 years ago. It says November 10th, 1893. Uh, but surely, ma'am, we do have at least some information. Yes, of course. We do have the address of the writer. Of course, of course. Uh, Laura, write another note to your siblings and post it by the front door, telling them we have a special mission for them. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I cannot bear the thought of His Royal Majesty's Postal Service not performing on their duties. And oh, to reunite these sisters after all this time. Yes, oh, the indeed. very thought is just resistible. Oh. oh, I think you mean irresistible, Laura. Oh, right you are, or something like that. Oh, finally, Miss Penelope, here are your dress boxes at last. Oh, oh wonderful, oh, how exciting. Oh, look, oh, look. Oh, Miss Penelope, I do believe you should be the talk of Paris. Oh, oh you're too you were... kind. May I say, Miss Lane, I feel I have let down His Royal Majesty's Postal Service with this missing letter. It must have been my fault. It's too long ago to cast blame now. That's right, there'll be no more of that. Now, Penelope, when do you leave for Paris? Well, it will take us a day or two to get to the coast. And from there, we will embark on the Gold Star Liner Ooh. after a night at the Dover Grand Hotel. Oh, oh my heavens God. above! Oh, my yeah, the Dover Grand Hotel! Mm. Never in my wildest dreams would I even see a hotel, let alone stay in one. Mm. Yes, it's all very butter on bacon, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. oh, sure. I am leaving myself tomorrow also. How can one leave oneself? You would think you would have to bring yourself with yourself. <laughs> oh, oh, no, no. I mean, I am leaving for Scotland. Well, my visit is not as far as all that. I've spent the last few Christmases with the Smiths on Trewsbury Road here in town. Oh, how exciting. All the festivities near and far. Isn't it? Isn't it just? Just? Yes. Just? Isn't it just? It seems you'll have a right quiet Christmas at this rate. Doesn't appear as though many of us will be remaining here in Candleford. My Laura, with all the activities happening, I, I hadn't even thought of that. I believe you have a point. Why, Miss Lane, who will be here, if you don't mind me asking? Well, let's see. You're off to your families. Postman Brown is off to Scotland. Gardener Rupert to the Smiths. And Penelope to Paris. My... I shall have a quiet Christmas. Well, after all the hustle and bustle of the Christmas season, it'll be a nice rest for you. Oh, well, we will bring you the finest presents from Paris. Oh, Penelope, oh, that's very so generous of you. Hopefully you Penelope. bring some back for us. Oh, um, everyone, oh. the tea's getting cold. Oh, no. Getting cold? Well, I cannot have that. Laura, go fetch some fresh tea. Postman Brown, out on the rounds. Oh, and Laura, don't forget to write that note to your siblings. And off we go! All right, yes, yes. 
My, alone on Christmas. I never thought I'd see the day. Lord, your word says, I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. Lord, this Christmas I am in need. Give me your strength. Amen. was dropped from the box. It says to the residents of 12 Mulberry Patch Lane. Well, bless my soul. Well, I can't remember the last time I opened the post. What's this on the front of the evening post, Father? 
Why, it's a monstrosity! A monstrosity indeed. It's inventions like these that are putting artisans out of business. It's called progress, Father. We have machines that can make just about anything, and faster than ever. Well, Joe, just because something's made faster, and there's more of them, does not make them better. Just look at Elizabeth's crochet. This one has taken me two weeks already. Yes, and don't you wish you were through with it so you can move on to something else already? Jim, I defy you to make anything of this value. Look at my skill. Elizabeth will sell her work and she'll buy us all Christmas presents. But Lord knows why she'd want to buy you anything, Joe. Children, <laughs> children! Although soon they'll have factories making lace a hundred times faster. Exactly my point. Why waste your time when you can have the machine do it for you? Well, in all this distraction, we have forgotten that it is Mother who should be the center of attention. Well, of course. Our apologies, Mother. Oh, yes, Mother. Do open it. From whom is it? Oh, gracious, yes. The letter. From whom could it be? Why? Look at this envelope. It's all faded and torn. It looks years old. And as I live and breathe, I, I don't believe it. Oh, what is it? Who is it from? This is all too much. The, the big envelope says it's addressed from Canterford Post Office. Who ever heard of a post office writing a letter? Well, a lost letter they would return to the sender. I mean, look how worn out it is. Heavens, I do believe you are correct, Jill. It does seem to be a lost letter. Oh, Will, I've been such a fool. Dear, let me see that. We regret to inform you that this letter was recently found undelivered after 10 years at the Candlefin Post. You have our deepest apologies for misplacing this correspondence. As you can see, your name and the recipient's name are no longer legible from water damage, wear and tear. If you still desire the recipient to receive this letter, Please fill out the words that have been faded. Fill in the words that have been faded? I scarcely remember them. How do I fill in the words? All this time, dear. All this time? I thought my sister was ignoring me. Sister? I thought she would never want anything to do with the likes of me. Coming from a small hamlet like Thornblow, I resented even the mention of Candleford. I, I thought she had snubbed me. You mean, Mother, you had a sister? Where is she? She's in Candleford, of all places. We've never met. Do you mean all this time? You've been holding a grudge against her? Because she lives in Candleford, you have loathed the very mention of the place. Well, that is about the long and short of it. I do feel so terribly sorry. Oh, but what a waste of time and what a motherly example I have not been. Well, dear, do not be too hard on yourself. I've been telling you all this time to forgive her. And now I'm telling you to forgive yourself. Besides, what better present than to take the time to write to her just before Christmas? But how words can bring people together. And how the absence of good words can keep them apart. Once again, the young philosopher spoke. <laughs> Go on, dear. Write. Yes, I will. I will fill in all the words that have been faded.
What's that? Why is there a letter on the front step? Oh, that's not supposed to be there. I must go see what it is. My goodness, it's the mystery letter. It's returned. Oh, I must go tell the others. Oh, everyone, I've just received another letter. Oh, it says, Dearest Adeline, it was this very special season of the year, exactly 10 years ago, that I sat to write this letter. The intent was to tell you that I am your sister. For adoption purposes, we were separated as tiny children. It was years later that my adopted parents told me about you. I wrote you this letter 10 years ago and received no response I thought you wanted nothing to do with me. I led in bitterness, and for this, I am now very sorry. When I realized it was a misunderstanding, I rekindled hope of meeting you. If we could meet this very Christmas, it would be the best gift of all to me. Your long lost sister, Abigail. sister how can it be all these years I've lived as if there's no one else but me I'm sure I'll love her like sisters ought to be the only thing that worries me is will she my sister Looking back on her life Does she remember days When she felt something missing In the strangest ways Some mysterious longing for what was meant to be She never knew the answer Was the waiting patiently What have they lived through? Hopes and dreams and fears Tell the history of all those missing years Who could imagine as they lived all alone The blessing life stored up for them When they are welcomed home as sisters
enjoying a late breakfast. Oh, but wait a moment. What are you still doing here? Do you know there's a severe storm surge that hit the coast, ma'am, and it's heading our way. Oh my goodness. Yes, and I heard it's not supposed to let up for another day or two. Oh, oh, I just couldn't bear the thought of it, Adeline. I mean, Postmistress Lane. The thought of a tempest-tossed ocean chilled to the bone all alone in Paris on Christmas. Oh, I had to change all my plans, all of them. Well, please call me Adeline for Christmas, mm. and I believe you've made the right decision. If I may be so bold, Miss, I mean Adeline, shouldn't Penelope spend Christmas with you? After all, I'm sure you admire her company immensely. Oh, what a marvelous preposition, Postman Brown. I think you might mean proposition, Laura. <laughs> Do I, <laughs> Laura? <laughs> well. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say, Penelope? Would you mind keeping Miss Adeline company? Well, I say yes. Yes, thank you, Miss Adeline. Christmas here at the post office. How festive indeed. Yes, of mm. course. Well, what a splendid turn of events. Oh, Miss Lane. I mean, Adeline, in <laughs> Christmas terms. <laughs> <laughs> a telegram came through. Oh. A, a telegram? Without Postman Brown's assistance, and without mine, that means you must have taken it, Laura. Well, I've watched you enough times to learn it by now. And it's for you, Postman Brown. Oh, Henry, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, it must be Christmas, for this is a Christmas miracle indeed. <laughs> <clears throat> to Henry Brown, stop. Unable to send a coach, stop. Too much snow already, stop. Have a Merry Christmas, nonetheless, stop. From your brother, Thomas, stop. Well, now there will be two people at the post office. Things are shaping up, Miss Lane. Well, it seems the whole world has come to a standstill. It's quite relieving and peaceful now, isn't it? Hmm. As I see it, we have two choices. We can either worry about the storm or we can embrace the peace of the storm. Oh, what wisdom, Laura. And I believe we will make the very best of the circumstances. Indeed. Well, I rather was wanting to simply stay home and enjoy a good old-fashioned post office Christmas. Well, I couldn't agree more, Henry. And I also have some news. As I've told you all, I have a sister newly discovered. She and her family are coming here for Christmas. Oh. They'll arrive late this evening. Oh, oh how that's wonderful. wonderful! Oh, that's so exciting. Miss Adeline, do you realize that all of a sudden, for this Christmas, you will not be alone? Everyone will be here! Oh, that's the idea. I hadn't told you that. Well, yeah. Quite everyone. Gardner Rupert is still going to his friend's house up the street. Yes. Well, we will miss you, Gardner Rupert. Yes. Wait! I've just had an epiphany. 
What if my friend were to come here? Oh, oh what an excellent idea. idea. It's all quite serendipering. <laughs> <laughs> yes, quite serendipering, isn't it, Lord? <laughs> Goodness, look at the clock. It's almost about time for the Christmas parade this evening. Oh, oh and all this so excitement, exciting. I'd forgotten about it. Oh, as had I. The Candleford Parade is always the commencement of Christmas. Yes. Oh, very true. Well, everybody, there is one last box of Christmas posts to sort and deliver before we shut down. Wonderful. Oh, we'll we'll get right oh Laura! This letter is addressed to you. Oh, to my. me? Oh, yes. Oh, Why, I've never had a letter in my life. To Laura Clark of the Candlefoot Post Office. Oh, it's from your sister Lizzie. Well, don't keep us waiting. What does it say? Dear Sister Laura, Father is too proud to ask this favor of you, and he does not want to presume upon the good graces of Miss Lane. But our situation is this. We have a gaping hole in our roof due oh, to it caving in. Oh, oh, the house is freezing and the fire won't warm it. Please, would it be possible for us to come to the post office for just a few weeks while it is repaired? We can all stay in the attic and you won't even know we were there. Your sister, Lizzie. Hmm. Oh, well, of course they can stay. Well, Postman Brown, go fetch for them. And Laura, I believe we have quite a few beds oh, to make. Yes, we do. Imagine it. Has there ever been a more wonderful Christmas present? Oh, well, the first Christmas present ever, the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, was the one to top them all. Oh, yes, oh, the yes, 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 yes. Well, upon my word, this has shaped up to be the most wonderful Christmas I have ever enjoyed. Yes, oh, that is true. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. to arrive, the warmth of Christmas, past and present, filled me. Although many years had been lost, right now in the present, time was returned to me, a most wondrous gift of God. I knew my sister, who had wrestled with her own heart all these years, was now content. 
This Christmas, the birth of God's Son on Earth, the most special delivery of all time, truly resonated as the gift labeled, To Everyone with Love. I realized this was not a turning back of the clock, but an adjustment of my heart. From longing to contentment that only God can give, I was blessed with family, for a blood sister I never knew I had, and for my assorted family, bonded by love, and a post office of all things. It was Christmas, and I was grateful. Please show your appreciation as we ask our cast to take a bow. What I most enjoyed about filming this was filming the music video clips. Merry Christmas! My favorite part of making the movie was all the bloopers. Merry Christmas, everyone! My favorite part about the play was us trying to pronounce the big words. Merry Christmas, everybody. I enjoyed messing up my lines. Merry Christmas. part of making the Christmas play was the group that I w was with. They made me look normal. My favorite part of the play was making new friends and meeting new people. Merry Christmas, everybody. to wear long pants and we were telling him how great his legs looked. <laughs> Was 
these knees. My favorite part was probably being able to make mistakes. So my highlight of this filming process was me. My favorite part of the production of the play was probably the improv with everyone while we were still in our characters. So one of my favorite like overall things about the play and like filming it was the outfits. I just like adored the outfits. Like <laughs> so that was that. <laughs> recording the movie was when Sebastian said Penelope instead of Penelope. We have been laughing about it the entire filming. <laughs> because it was something we had just learned and then we kept saying it at inappropriate times. Well, it's nothing as grand as that, but it will bring some much needed. Well, then 
lovely. Everyone will be staying for tea. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, lovely. Oh, oh, tea cake is so oh, lovely. Oh, my oh, 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 I pulled oh, my skirt you. down when I came on stage. Yes. Bowie, action. Yes, it's all very butter on bacon, isn't it? <laughs> oh, yes. Of course, of course. I myself am leaving tomorrow no, also. I'm leaving I'm myself. Leaving. I'm leaving myself. Let's do it again. I'm leaving. Action! Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at 12 Mulberry Lane, Ford Lane. Well, that's Ford just a few Lane. miles from here. We'll be there in three minutes to three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> when the joy comes to you, <laughs> Action. Oh, gracious, yes. The letter. Put this. <laughs> <laughs> Action. Uh, my mind just right. went away. Action. <laughs> Action. <laughs> From a small hamlet. I can't wish you enough times to learn it by now. Anyways, it's for you, Postman Brown. Oh, that. Well, this might. Mm, no. We're decorating for Christmas. We're on our way, we're on our way. Looby doo boo doo boo doo boo boo and here oh, she comes. Oh, and Chloe move back, move back, move back. And the tea goes in the middle. And we are getting ready for our guests. And let's go back the same way that we left. Goodbye. We're both going the same way. <laughs> So I see you had time to deliver your own letter to yourself. Sorry, Miss Lane. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how to read? Oh, what's this word? We. Oh, oh man, I can't wait to watch that movie.